Yeah, it's exciting. It's it's fun to be back. I always love being back for this time of year. It's just fun to be around the guys and, and be able to work out and, um, yeah, be able to be around, you know, the training staff and everybody. And it's a little bit more um, relaxed in early April. You're still working hard, but you're able to hang out with the guys away from the building and uh, build some camaraderie in that way and um, enjoy some time together. It's fun. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it, it, it's still one of my favorite nights to like think about and talk about. And um, yeah, it, it, I, I knew maybe like a week in advance that it was likely going to happen. Now you never know until the pick happens. But um, that day, um, the head coach at the time, Coach Fisher, um, kind of sent me a text that sent me in, in the direction of knowing that it was going to happen, which was nice of him. Um, but yeah, it was cool. It was really fun. All my friends and family there, something I'll never forget. It was in Chicago. Um, and yeah, really enjoyed walking across there, and and whoever it ends up being this year, I think we all kind of know who it will be. But you know, it, it, it'll be fun to see. What's your advice? Yeah. What's your advice to young guys who are now coming upon this time in their lives for yeah for the draft for the moment for just the memories? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously do your best and have fun and, and all that, but try to find um, people you can rely on and people that uh, are on your team and on your side and and don't have uh, anything to gain. You know, whether that's your family, your friends, or um, you know, different people that are around you, just create create you know a, a certain bubble of, of you know security that um, allows you to be yourself and and also allows you know you not to be taken advantage of. Is this such a culture of collaboration here? That's kind of been the the big thing with, with Dan and Brad. I'm just wondering, as as you've been here a few more years, like how how is your role at change in the draft process at all? Are you consulted? Do you, you know, are you the type of guy that likes looking at prospects maybe the team's talking about? Do you, do you fit into that puzzle at all, Joe? You know, I, I would, I would, uh, I would love to be able to, you know, tell them, hey, draft that receiver and draft that receiver and draft that receiver. <laughs> but uh, I trust Brad so much and um, Dan obviously as well. And um, Brad's given me some insight over the years into their process, which has been fun for me to learn. And, um, the amount of time they put in and the amount of like care and, and real thought that's put in, um, independent thought, you know, not group think, independent. And it's like really interesting to learn about. And um, I trust them, you know, pretty good with that and, and know they'll make some good decisions. But yeah, I'm always going to be trying to bang the table for some offensive guys. Yeah, you look at you know, your career and what you've been able to do, obviously, in LA, you lead, lead them to the Super Bowl. You come here, you, you do something in Detroit that haven't been done. Now you up for the extension. You know, that's been a test to your man. Obviously, you know, your agent probably will handle that. But just how are you feeling just being able to accomplish what you've been able to accomplish and be in this situation to possibly secure a long-term term future you yeah. know, with this franchise? Yeah, man, it's been fun. The last three years have been been really fun and um, not, you know, not always easy, but but fun and, and hard. And um, I've been surrounded by a lot of good um, teammates and coaches that have, you know, helped me, you know, realize some of my potential. and. You know, hopefully there's still a lot more there. But, yeah, I've, I've had a ton of fun and, and winning in this city and winning for these fans. And um, something that I've, you know, this offseason has been so cool to go around and just the amount of people that have, like, been really heartfelt about, like, what winning here, even though we didn't win the Super Bowl, but winning the playoff game and making to the playoffs, how heartfelt they've been and, and you know, thank th saying thank you and all that. And you're like, whoa, like, I'm just playing football. But, you know, people are obviously really passionate here. And, um, that's been the most rewarding part is playing for the fan base here that, that cares so much and the city that cares so much and um, being able to be a part of that. You talked about it. What is the latest with the contract? Just to follow up on uh, yeah, there's been discussions, but um, I'll leave it at that. You're still confident that it'll be done at some point? Yeah, you, know, you, you, you hope so, but I'm not in control of that. Kind of the same, same question. I just, you talked about the draft. You, know, you said you expected it to be that situation, but it wasn't until it was a reality, right? Is sure. that kind of similar to what your contract mindset is right now? I mean, do you expect this to get done? And you're just kind of waiting to get across that, you know, to yeah, use you, nice phrase. I don't know. You never want to like say something like it, it's it's there's discussions, and and Brad has said what he said to you guys, and I'll say the same thing. There's been discussions, and um, yeah, it's there's you know, my agent's on top of it. He's doing a good job, and I trust those guys. How badly do you want to be here in Detroit? 
yeah, it's been amazing, man. Yeah, I, I love it here and um, would love to be here for a long time. It's been it's been really uh, really special. Like I mentioned, the playing in front of these fans and being able to provide um, you know a winning culture in the last year and a half or, or so and um, see them experience that and be able to be a part of that um, has been fun. But um, by no means are we satisfied or you know happy to be here or any of that. It's uh, about what's next now. Jeremy, you watch the 49ers game, and what's the last bit you think this team needs to get from that last 30 minutes over at home? Man, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems a lot of things just kind of didn't go our way, and, and I hate to, for that to sound like an excuse because, you know, we, we felt like we should have won that game anyways. But um, the second half, they played well, and we didn't. And, and that's kind of the, the, the bottom line. I wish I could go back and pinpoint some plays for you, but – there was a lot of them. There wasn't just one. There wasn't just you know one thing that went wrong. There was a handful of them, and um, yeah, it's it, it's the way the ball bounced that day, but um, gave us a ton of fire. It really did. I know Dan's talked about it. Gave us a ton of fire and um, gives us something you know to to look at and, and, and to draw on for next year. When that game ended, when that game ended, did, did that in your own mind? Did you think that was the last game you'd be with Ben Johnson? And I guess when did you? Hmm. Or how did you find out that, that I did not think that would be okay? So you had some inkling there. Um, I, you know, again, you never know. Things change so fast in the NFL, but um, through our conversations throughout the year, um, I, 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 I had a hunch that he could be back. Now I didn't know he could he could have been swayed. I don't know, um, but the way he spoke to me and and. Um, throughout the year, yeah. It, I don't know if I could put a percentage on how sure I was, but um, yeah, or it could have been 50-50. It could have been a little more than 50-50. What's been, uh, been, we talked about this a lot before early on, but what's been the benefits of having a staff with so much former NFL experience on it? Like, Can you point to a particular time of working with anybody on staff where, man, this guy played in the league, I'm, I'm lucky to have that, you know, as far as like helping you in a situation or something like that? Yeah, I mean, Brunel's a perfect example. He's he's been through a lot of it, and um, you know he's had his highs, he's had, he's had his lows, and I think having a guy like that for me to rely on, and um, he's seen every bit of playing this position. He played it for a long time, and um, it's it's been fun. It's been really fun to work with him. He's been um, great to me. He's been hard on me when I need it, and um, it's been good. You've had some good continuity with, with your offensive personnel the last couple of years. Uh, a little bit of a change in the, the wide receiver room with, with Josh departing. Can you just? you know, speak to your relationship with DPJ, you know, yeah. how that developed after the trade deadline and what kind of level of confidence you have going into, you know, this, this offseason program this season with him? Yeah, I, th I think he's done a great job. It, it was, you know, he came in and we were trying to get him involved in certain ways and, excuse me, sometimes the ball doesn't find him all the time. I thought he made some big plays, though, throughout the year. That I think about the fourth down conversion against the Bears was a huge catch and, and he had more than that. But, um, yeah, it's it's – it's always hard for somebody to come in the middle and try to integrate them. And um, I think this off season has been big for him to get himself ready, obviously, and, and for us to work together and um, feel good about it. The way JMO finished last year, especially in the, in the championship game, and really that last month and a half stretch, how excited are you, you know, to see what he can do in, in, in year three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, he's been doing a good job. And, and he, again, even this off season, like with Donovan, I think he's, I think he's worked on it. He really has, and he looks great. Um, we did some things yesterday. We threw without coaches, without anyone out there, so not illegal. We, th <laughs> we threw on the field, all within the rules. Um, and he looked great. He looked great. He looked like he's ready to go. He looked like he's been working hard. And um, I'm excited for him, absolutely. So, uh, first second question, just since we're on that, Amon Ra was not here yesterday, I don't think. Um, I don't know if that's contractual or not, but if he misses any chunk of the spring, I know it's you know optional, but how do you make up for that? Do you even need to since you have such a great – Relationship. We work together a ton in the offseason. Yeah, we're both in LA during the um, time off and um, have a great rapport. So, yeah, I think we're good. I'm genuinely curious. Like, we all know what the goal is for this team and, and like how good you, know, you guys can be. When you come in day one of the offseason now, do you talk about the Super Bowl? Does that wait till training camp? Like, when do those goals start to crystallize? Like, hey, everything we're doing now. Is yeah, I think we all know what the goal is, and it's always been the goal. I don't think it was it was not the goal last year. I think um, we got we got a chance to kind of taste it last year, so you, you you get to see what it feels like. But 
Um, that's the goal every year, and, and this year it's absolutely the goal. Obviously, the expectations and our standards will rise and the outside expectations will rise, but internally we're, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing and um, try to raise our internal expectations and standards and um, be even better. I think Dan put it, put it great at the end of last year is, is how much harder it's going to be, and we know that. It's going to be, it's going to be harder. People are going to be gunning for us, and um, you know it's going to be hard to first defend our division title. That's number one, and then see where we can go from there. But yeah, absolutely. Um, holding that trophy at the end of the year, only one team gets to do it, and, and that's our goal. Do you vocalize it, though? I mean, you talked yeah. about it yesterday. Yeah. Did we talk about it yesterday? Um, no, we didn't really have like that setting to do that. But um, that time will come, absolutely. From the last year in the building in 21, how do you feel that you're a better starting quarterback? Another great question. Um, a ton of ways. I think um, Dan and Ben and everyone up there have, have really empowered me to um, you know, make it my own and, and be a big part of um, what we're doing and um, relying on me, asking me questions, listening to me. And, and those things allow me to kind of be more comfortable and, and, and settle in. And um, you know, obviously that first year here was, was a struggle. But since then, we've had um, decent success and only expected to go more and more. You know, our, our standards continue to rise. Our expectations continue to rise. But to answer your question, I've, I've grown mentally, physically. Um, emotionally, spiritually, all that, and um, feel very comfortable. The last couple of years has been kind of grown with to match that offer. Are we excited about that? And just maybe just take us through that that process here. Your thought? Yeah, very excited. We were just talking about it earlier. Um, I mean, it was a unique process for me. It seemed like a new process for most of the parties involved too. So, kind of just had to rely on um, my agents, um, kind of trusting them to walk me through it and do what they thought was best for me. Um, but at the end of the day, just super excited. I get to be back here in Detroit. Um, you know, this place is home now. So glad that they matched it and happy I get to stay here. Rock, bigger picture. I mean, you show up here originally. You're not drafted. You don't know if you're going to make it. Just the journey to get to a point where another team wants you and this team says, no, we're keeping you. Just how that all is kind of gone through your life. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. I had a... Um, our exit interviews at the end of the year, I was talking with Ben Johnson and he said, man, don't you think that picking Detroit's the best decision you ever made in your life in unrestricted free agency? And uh, I've said that multiple times now. Um, by far, it's the best decision I've ever made. And looking back on it now, um, very fortunate to have had the opportunity to come here and things kind of work out the way we'd planned and hoped for them to. Does this give you a boost in confidence as a player, as a Super Bowl caliber team? wanted you and made a financial commitment to you? Yeah, for sure. Also, I mean, that goes both ways. That's how we are here in Detroit now, too. It, we've kind of been talking that the uh, the motto this next year is it takes more. Um, so I think everybody will have to step up their game. But, yeah, it definitely, definitely brings confidence. But, um, you know, I think everybody on our team should be confident knowing that we have the experience of being there now and um, looking forward to carrying that over to next year. Everybody talks about the, the leap that you take from year one to year two. Can you take us back to, to, to that time frame for you? Just how big of a player did you grow between that span? And how maybe knowing that, are you excited to see you know, what, what some of the young guys will do you know, going from year one to year two? Yeah, def I think the, um, probably the factor that contributes most to improvement is just playing time, more and more reps and experience. So for me, going from year one to year two, I mean, I go back and watch my rookie year tape. I can't believe how bad I was, you know. <laughs> and then uh, it's the same thing, same thing with second year to year three. I just you just keep improving every day, and that's kind of your goal and your focus as a player is just to get better every single day. Um, so you know, I kind of think the longer you stick around, the better you should be. Um, we had some incredible weapons on offense as rookies this past year, obviously. So very excited to see um, those guys improve and just take their game to the next level. It takes more motto. Can you like help define what does more mean? Like, what do you think it takes for this team to get over that hump? I think it's everything. everything. I just a holistic approach. Um, it starts at the top, you know, with with uh, Brad and Dan all the way down. Um, coming in here, starting OTAs takes more in the way we prepare, and then getting into training camp in the season. I think just got to go above and beyond in every aspect, knowing that. Um, we got so close last year, but there's even more that we got to do. We want to win it all this year. Been through the offseason program a few times now, but after your rookie year, you guys come in with a handful of wins. Then last year, you come in with a win against the Packers. This year, how different does it feel, if at all? Um, 
I don't know. It, it doesn't feel too different, honestly. Um, higher expectations, probably. But besides that, being in the building with the guys feels the same as it always has. Um, it's a close knit team. I was super excited to get back up here for OTAs, be with the guys working out. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say besides the expectations, not a whole lot different. Can you talk your relationship with Steve Hyden a little bit? How he's been able to help you as well, you know, having, a, having an NFL experience as well. Was there any yeah. moments where that helped you particular last year? Yeah, tremendously. He's the best coach I've ever had by far um, when it comes to his knowledge of the game. Um, the way he's able to communicate it with us is incredible. Uh, I've learned so much from him already, and I'm really looking forward to working with him again this year. Just keep getting better. Can you speak to one moment in particular, maybe like, man, that that's when that kind of came in, having an NFL experience with his coach. Yeah, probably early on in training camp. Um, uh, I mean, a specific example would just be working on pass pro. We were kind of struggling early on in training camp, and um, him having played uh, the position for so long, he had so many you know, different technique ideas and drills and things to help us with, and I think it really helped us hammer that down early on in the season and improve on it you know, through the rest of the year. Best coach you've ever had, but Ben Johnson's still here. Right? He, can, he can hear that. He's going he's gonna to bring that one up. <laughs> can you share what it was like the, the, for you personally, the weeks and days leading up to the draft and not being drafted, just your mentality and, and what it, you would say to any kids right now sitting out there who may be like you about what draft day means and, and what it can do for your career? Yeah, it's funny. Let my. Let's see, my second year after my rookie season, I was watching the draft in the Henry Hotel where all of us stay in the Deer and OTAs. And I looked in the room and there's six of us in there and all of us were undrafted. I said, why are we even watching this thing? <laughs> uh, no, that was kind of funny because I didn't, I didn't really have the highest expectations. I knew that, um, um, you know, with my college stats and, and, uh, and career that uh, it probably would be tough to get drafted. I did do, have perform fairly well at Pro Day, which helped me. Uh, get some eyes on me. Um, but really, my whole goal was just to be able to show up to an OTAs, show people what I could do, and then just take it day by day. So, you know, that's what ended up happening, and fortunately, it worked out. What's your, advice, what's your best advice to guys who may be in your position coming up here in the next week and just to keep their heads up and to see what you've accomplished? Probably just be a sponge and absorb all the knowledge you can, just try and improve every day. Um, if you just focus on yourself, do the best you can do. Things will play out how they should. Who else was in that room with you? Uh, Shane Zilstra, Tom Kennedy, Tim Boyle, David Blau, all those guys. So a good group of guys, some of the best teammates I've ever had. How's the arm and just what was the, the process of getting that fixed? Feels good. I mean, it was uh, it's just a bone healing, typical, not much you can do, just kind of waiting on it to heal. But finally back into the uh, strengthening stage, doing everything in the weight room now, which feels great. Um, Great to be back doing that stuff. So feeling really good. They brought back to the UDFA days. Is there a part of that that always stays with you as kind of a driving force for you, never allows you to be comfortable and you just keep grinding? Yeah, definitely. I think it gives you a chip on your shoulder. I mean, I'm proud of it. I think someone told me the stat a few years ago. I think a third of the league is made up of UDFAs. And um, I think that's a testament to um, kind of the work ethic it takes to get a job in the league. And then also once you're there, you kind of know that's what it takes to maintain it as well. So uh, definitely proud of that. With the free agency process, how, how quickly did you know that Detroit was going to match? I know they had five days, but I mean, did you get a call 10 minutes later from home? like, yeah, I got this. I had uh, two and a half hours left to the deadline. So <laughs> sweating it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah. Was there stress in that, I guess, not knowing till the, the last minute? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was stressful, but um, also, I don't know, looking back on it, it was kind of a cool experience. Can you go back to the, the, the beginning of that process, um, just because it is so unfamiliar with a lot of us? When they offer the tender to you first, the lines do, do they say, do you have a conversation with Brad where he goes, Go ahead and see what you're worth, or what's the conversation, I guess, with the Lions when that happens? Uh, I'm not a part of any of those conversations. It's really my agents with them. So, um, you know, they kind of take care of all that stuff. Big takeaway is you can't get away from Iowa tight ends. Yeah, that's right. TJ, <laughs> Kittle, or, uh, just, you know, something about your skill set complements those guys really well. Apparently. They're all good guys, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just so over those the, five uh, days, had you looked for a place to live in San Francisco? <laughs> 
Um, I did look into the price per square foot. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another plus to stay yeah. here. Yeah. I was just going to ask, uh, uniforms, do you have any thoughts on the new uniforms? Uh, yeah, I think they're sweet. I'm excited. Yeah. Not without giving away too much. Can you share what, what do you like about them? I don't What's know like if I'm allowed to say anything, right, Greg? Yeah, <laughs> he's giving me one of these. <laughs> but they, they look great, though. I can, I can tell you that much. It's always good to be back and see all your friends and stuff like that because you go away in the off season, you do your own thing. Um, but these are the guys you go to battle with, so it's always it's always good to see your friends again. With the way that the game ended in San Francisco, how much does that provide motivation and a hunger to take the next step this season? And what does that mean for the Talk about it. What are the conversations like? Is it mostly internal? Um, I mean, as far as like conversations within like a team setting we, we haven't had any meetings yet so there hasn't been anything like that obviously how that game ended was a was a disappointment for us especially because um i think we showed throughout the the season last year and in that game that we like we belong in that position it's not a fluke um but they made more plays than us so they were the better team that day which was you know like i said a disappointment for us um but i don't i don't think that that's going to like change our mindset or how we feel about ourselves that we came up short i think we're just going to keep moving forward and like i said we have, you know we have bigger goals um ahead of us so it's not like that one moment is gonna kind of define how we move forward with like our mindset and our approach though and fuel i guess is what i was of course yeah because you know watching the super bowl when you're that close to it hurts um, I mean, I think I watched a quarter of it, and I just, I was just disinterested because, um, I don't know if I, I felt like we matched up well with anybody that we were going to play. Um, so yeah, it definitely hurts, and it was a disappointment, especially as special of a year it was to, to end, um, end it going home early. It was a bummer for sure, but. Stuff like that's going to happen. You're not going to win every single game in a blowout. Uh, so I think we'll be better for it and learn, th learn some things uh, from it. But I, like I said, I don't think that that's going to define our whole approach. Like that or yeah, yeah. usually I watch the whole thing because I'm like, oh, it's so cool. It's Super Bowl. I would love to play in one. Um, but yeah, I was just so disinterested in it because, you know, obviously we were one game short of it, and I felt like we did belong, and I felt like we matched up well with everybody. So um, it's always one of those, you know, what could have been sort of things. You've been around for obviously a few different eras in the Lions organization, but obviously another one signified was you guys bringing up the New Jersey Thursday. Yeah. Have you saw him yet? What's your, what's your thoughts on him? I haven't. Have I've tried to get Eamon to send me pictures, and he wouldn't do it. Um, I got a little bit of a description, so I think I kind of know what they're going to look like, but. Um, I'm excited about them. I think they're going to look great. Um, and I know the fans are going to be excited about them. And uh, it's just going to be, it's going to be cool. How, how is the team doing when you guys are in Bill New Jersey? Is that like an exciting thing? Or like what's the kind of the, the team's mood? Of like, I mean, it was already a cool jersey, I feel like. But like just yeah, I mean, I'm sure the skill guys are a little more excited than the big guys, <laughs> you know? Um, hopefully there's a little more elasticity to these. But uh, it's fun. And you guys go off on game day, they want to look good. Because they say, you know, the look good, play good thing. Um, so you want to have cool uniforms. So um, I think it's, it's just going to be another little fun aspect moving forward. So I'm excited about them. It's going to be fun. Taylor, there's a lot of talk um, of extensions with this team this yep. offseason with, with Jared, obviously. Amon Ra, even, you know, Aleem's getting mentioned. I feel like maybe you're not getting as mentioned as much in that group, but you are also entering the final year of your contract. You've said many times that you wanted to spend your entire career in one spot. Yep. Have you had any conversations? Is there any progress with, with what your long-term future looks like here? Um, kind of like entry-level conversations, base-level conversations. I think, uh, you know, my agent and the lines are on the same page. Um, so it's very much a um, amicable conversation so far. But super early stages, nothing of substance really other than, okay, well, we're going to try and figure something out, whether – it's multiple years or it's not, you know, but we're very much on the same page, so I feel comfortable with that. And you're ultimately are you saying you expect something to, to get done and allow you to con continue on? That would be my goal. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a lot more moving parts than just me on this team. You know, I look at it from my perspective and, you know, what's best um, for, like, me and my family uh, moving forward. But, you know, they have the draft coming up. They have a lot of other guys that are going to sign. And, and uh, you know, for me, this will be 
you know, knock on wood, a third contract if I do get one. Um, so, you know, you have guys that are going into their second contract. Um, so there's just a lot of variables at play, um, but it's not something that I think will be uh, an issue. You obviously realize how you know, rare that is, I guess, in the NFL, right, that, that for, for guys to sign three contracts with one team or stay with one team for their career. What does it mean to you to have seen the, the organization from where it was when you came in to where it is right now? Yeah, I mean, I take a lot of pride in that because I feel like when teams draft you, they do so much homework on you. Like, they, they dig so deep into everything. They'll talk to your high school teachers, your family members. They'll do everything they possibly can to try and get to the root of who is this person um, and is he somebody that we want to represent our organization, you know, especially when you're spending an early round pick on somebody. Um, and for them to pick me, and then to go through different regimes of coaching staffs and they still say, this person adds value, he is what we want to be about. Um, I, I take pride in that personally. And then as far as from a, from a team aspect, to kind of see the um, like growth and metamorphosis of the team and changing and to be able to be a part of that, um, it's just super cool because you get to be a part of something bigger in these past you know, two years, we've been able to start to see some success and turn things in the right direction. Um, and it, and it happened fast. Like it's like it's like that. All of a sudden, oh wow, the Lions are you know a competitive team. They're a good team. Um, but there were years before that where okay, we're building in the right direction, and you get to see it. So definitely something I take pride in. So you enjoy getting to see your your friends. I mean that's the, the best part of this time of year. New friend in the room, yeah. Kevin. I don't know if you've got any of these baked goods I've heard about, but uh, I heard about them. I just <laughs> early impressions of what what. Kevin can bring to the, the, the line, to the, the room? I, I think he is one of those types of players that mer very much fits into the, um, like the model of what they're looking for, like old-school football player type guy, um, especially on the offensive line. Like those are the kind of guys you want. Um, you know, I've, I've got to talk with him briefly a couple times. You know, I saw him today. I saw him yesterday. I got to talk to him a little bit. Um, so, but I think he's very much one of those like old-school grit, um, football players that you know that we love to bring around here because you know you can you know run fast jump high but we need guys to play football and uh, he's one of those guys and I, I know Aleem has talked about playing against him and how powerful he was and everything like that so um, gonna be a great addition I think he's gonna be a great fit everybody's seen him taking pass sets in the delivery room so the guy loves football um, so I think he'll he'll fit in well here and I think he'll be good um, with him and both Graham for all of our young interior offensive linemen to kind of learn from those guys because everybody does things a little bit differently, but they're guys that have been successful and have done it at a high level. Um, so I think he's not only going to be good for his level of play, but for the next generation of players. You play one less game than the maximum you can play in the NFL season. Now, uh, for your after recovery after the season, was it different this year? Did it take you know what, how much time after the end of the season did you guys recover with? And also, what did you learn about that for this season where you hope to go to that one more game? Yeah, like I said, it was definitely a lot longer of a season. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get ahead of this, Amen. Um, so, I, I mean, I did have to have a, a foot and ankle surgery. So um, that made it a little more low-key for me at the first couple weeks of the offseason. So I was able to actually rest and spend some time with my family. I think I started working out February 15th. Um, but as far as like feeling mentally exhausted or anything like that, not really much of that because, you know, as, a, as an athlete, when you're just kind of sitting at home not doing anything, you're kind of like, oh, I feel like I need to be doing something. And for me, I know when I get a workout, exercise, feel like I'm improving, um, I feel like it helps my mood and everything like that. And just kind of getting back to work, you can kind of get over that little hangover of how the season ended last year. So. Uh, it's been a great off season for me, and I like I feel really good. Um, and I'm like I'm happy with my decision that I wanted to go get a surgery. Um, so it's just gonna be exciting. I feel like it's just every single year is like how can I find a way to improve or get better or do something to maximize myself. And I feel like this off season has been that also, um, especially because I have a you know a great training staff that I work with in Arizona, and they were on top of it um, with every single thing they possibly could. And then uh, my wife as well, like she's she's phenomenal with just 
taking care of our, our home and, and our daughter and, you know, the nutritional aspect. She does a ton of my supplements. Like, she's just so on top of it. And, like, she says all the time, like, I just want to help you in whatever way I can. So, um, definitely a quicker off season, but I feel like turning the page, um, kind of, kind of like revitalizing, help you get over that hangover of how the season ended. Just, just to follow up, is that due to the you know, problems you've had over the last couple of years, or was that specific for the ankle injury you suffered last year? And so it was a foot and an ankle surgery. Um, this was deltoid repair and a seismoidectomy with a tendon transfer. So, and a couple bone spurs. So, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so the sesamoid's a bone in the ball of your foot. Um, so I had stress fracture vertically and horizontally. And I've been dealing with it since probably junior year of college. So it's just gotten progressively worse. Um, and it was to the point when I injured the ankle, it was putting more stress on the ball of my foot in the arch because the deltoid was torn. So, um, so they went in there, they did the, the, their special CT scan that they do. Um, and they're like, we got to take it out. Your bone's necrotic. It's dying. And just, so it's hurt me forever. And like within two days after the surgery, I felt incredible. I, I took pain meds for one day. Um, walking around fine now, feel really, really good. Um, so that's kind of what I was leading into. Like, can I find a way to improve myself, not just get something fixed just to get it fixed? And I feel like walking around today as opposed to the last game of the season, um, I think it's going to be even better. Like, I was talking to my trainers in the off season. It's like, you know, you're not going to have this thing just nagging at you all the time. So maybe you'll be able to, like, maximize even more. Maybe you'll feel even younger and better. And I, I really do think I will. Can we do there be any restrictions? In, in spring? I mean, will you be able to do things? Yeah, I mean, I'll be limited in spring, but as far as comes time for training camp and season, I'll be good to go. be fine. Can I just ask draft memory from 2016, what you remember as, you know, think of the young kids right now, a week out from, from the draft, and it's obviously going to be here in Detroit. Just you can lend any yeah. insight into what your experience was like and any advice you'd have for those guys going forward. Um. I think it's important to spend it with the right people. Um, spend that time with you know your family and friends, people who've been there with you all along the way. Because as you're going to get drafted, you're going to have companies reaching out to you, want to do merchandise deals, sign you for this, sign you for that. People want to do the autograph signings. You know, everybody's going to be pulling you every which way. You're going to have your agent saying, "Oh, we do this interview, whatever." Um, and none of that ultimately matters. Um, you're not going to get any merchandise deal that's going to pay you any more money than you can if you're a great player in this league. Um, and I think it's a good time to kind of reflect on your journey going back and those people who are important to you to get to where you're at. Um, so that would be the biggest thing. And then just kind of be in that moment. Um, you, you know, you, if you get a phone call, like, that's, that's incredible. Um, but I think it's also good to keep into perspective that – there's plenty of people who have been free agents who have turned out to be incredible all-pro level players. Um, so that's not defining of what your career can be. Um, I mean, that's just kind of you're kind of getting your foot in the door. So um, it's an incredible opportunity if you get drafted or if you get drafted early. Um, but that doesn't have to define your career and then just spend it with the right people.